Hey everyone, I'm Rochelle. Hi, and I'm Jeff. And welcome to Fellowship Missionary Church's Christmas Eve Celebration 2020. We are excited to be with you this evening because we've got some special things in store tonight. Not just special things, but a special message from Pastor Joe where he'll point us to hope, the star of hope. So we invite you to sit back and relax and let's get ready to celebrate Christmas Eve.
Wow, Rochelle. That was incredible, that was Jeff. Amazing. Man. Okay, our team's got some skill. <laughs> It's been an awesome Christmas Eve so far, celebrating, worshiping that song uh, that it plateaued our early time together. And now the team's headed over to Gordon's house yeah. and they're gonna do some Christmas carol singing. Do you like Christmas carols? I love Christmas carols. Yeah, amazing. So we're gonna head over to Gordon's home right now and we invite you to join in as our worship team leads us in some familiar Christmas carols. Hey Fellowship family, we're so glad you're watching with us tonight on Christmas Eve. And this is part of my extended worship family. We want to say Merry Christmas. Let's say Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. This is the time of the service that we're going to all sing carols together. So we want you to stand and join us as we sing Christmas carols together. Let us adore him. Let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Worship and adore him.
was born, our praise changed, and it is right for us to praise His name forevermore. That's right, and when we praise the Lord, we can all feel this overwhelming feeling of hope that arises in us yes. as we praise, which is just a sweet feeling, especially on Christmas Eve. Well, every Christmas Eve, it is our tradition uh, to give 100% of the tithe and offer, offering that we receive on Christmas Eve, we, we give that away to ministry partners locally and even around the world. And this year, uh, we've got an exciting initiative. Yes, we do. Take a look as we watch this initiative called Pandemic of Hope. 
When I was on staff at Fellowship 17 years ago, I, I fell in love with creating ministry for the marginalized. You know, I, I identified with those that were caught in the messiness of the world and having to navigate all that. One of the programs that we launched here at FMC in 2006 was a Friday night music venue, you know, where some nights we'd have as many as 500 kids come and fill the church to hear music. It was called Club Remedy, and it was created uh, for those, those kids that would never otherwise darken the door of a church. In 2007, I was approached by Shar Binkley, a former executive director of WBCL, and she asked me if I wanted to join her in kind of researching and, and coming up with some new ideas to reach teens. We knew that it needed to be uh, some type of platform that talked about the things we just don't talk about and to help those caught in the midst of those issues to know that there's freedom in Christ. That, of course, would become Remedy FM. And although I left the staff here at Fellowship, Tanya and I uh, didn't leave the church. We, we decided to stay here and continue to make this our home. You know, for a few years, we used the internet radio concept at Remedy. And I remember one afternoon I was doing a show and we would give away a lot of things on these shows, you know, lots of swag. And uh, a young man using Instant Messenger uh, popped in and told us that he was in the midst of a suicide plan. Through God's incredible kindness, the same young man had won a CD two weeks earlier. And so we called 911 and we gave the police that information. And later on, we would find out that that 16-year-old male uh, was found barely alive on his living room floor. And we realized in that moment that everything had changed, that we were called to something very different than what we thought. That was 13 years ago. And although we stopped doing internet radio about 10 years ago and moved from Remedy FM to what we are now, Remedy Live, now, now we've embraced this 24-hour chat center available for teens, for adults, for people that find themselves caught in a, in a secret struggle, you know, mental health, uh, anxiety, depression, uh, thoughts of suicide. Since 2014, we've had over 10 million interactions in our chat center, uh, topics that are so hard to talk about face-to-face, -face, but through technology can be easily discussed. Generally, one client every three hours uh, will share a suicide plan of every day, of every week, of every month. And so we really, we've really felt called to be a ministry in this mental health space. Mental health is a mission field. When I can sit with someone and they vulnerably share of their struggles, or I can offer like, I get it, that would be so difficult to navigate, then that communicates that they are seen, they are heard, they are known, they are loved. As a licensed marriage and family therapist, I find that a lot of people are seeking to manage their anxiety by picking up their devices. They hope that they can cope with their anxiety by escaping. Yet what that does is actually leads to poor mental health. This interferes with our sleep, especially if we use our phones right before bed. We're finding that families argued about their technology use before the pandemic. Well, the pandemic has certainly not helped that. In fact, we're arguing even more about our use of technology. You know, I'm excited because Remedy Live and Fellowship Missionary Church has sought to partner in initiatives in the past. We've had our annual marriage conference. We've done Wired X experiences together. And now we're set to create an initiative that will bridge the cyber world right with connection within community. This is exciting. We asked, what would it look like if we used the very tool that people are using to manage their anxiety, their depression, their loneliness? What if we intercepted and we redeemed that very tool to not lead to greater anxiety, but to actually lead to greater health, to help within community and relationships, to people finding a place amongst each other? As a team member here at Remedy Live, I am so excited to be partnering with Fellowship Missionary Church in helping to advance the mission of mental health. The stigma of mental health stretches across all cultures, all faiths, and all races. It is so important that we help tear down those barriers that separate people from getting the help that they really need. All of us, really. A lot of people don't know that I am very passionate about mental health. I am a social worker and working in the field, I see how the stigma of mental health can really impact families and isolate people. 
Well, Clinton, I thank God that I was on staff when you were back in the day here at Fellowship. And I want you to know that we at Fellowship are so proud of you and what uh, the ministry at Remedy Live has become under your leadership. And uh, we are thrilled to be able to partner with you in this fresh new way. I mean, imagine tens of thousands of people around our region are struggling and hurting without hope and without knowing where to go to find hope. And as they're scrolling on their phone, that they can, they can uh, be connected to an ad that pops up that directs them to uh, uh, the chat center and to fellowship. I think this has unlimited potential. Thank you, Joe. Um, it means so much to Tanya and I, and I'm also proud of our church that, that we're embracing mental health as this mission field and, and inviting you now to participate in this project, that, that when you give to this project, you're helping us create ads that are gonna be seen on smartphones all around our city that you're gonna help connect those that are struggling with depression and anxiety, but not sharing that with anybody, to be able to confess that to a soul medic so that soul medic can direct and guide them here to programs like the planting and our Sunday morning celebrations and community one-on-one -on -one partnerships here at the church. And so I'm so grateful for a church that believes in, in collaboration and believes in this type of a ministry, this mm -hmm. mental health focused ministry. Clinton, I also love this idea that people are searching for hope, not necessarily searching for us in the church, but your ministry platform is looking for them as well. Yeah, well, the way that works, any social media platform is people's curiosity of typing into that Google search box or, or looking on social media for something. And in this particular campaign, those people that are looking for solutions to their anxiety, solutions to their depression, solutions to their loneliness, their worry, are gonna find caring, kind, compassionate Christ followers, not only in our team, but here at Fellowship. Right, and so here's your opportunity, Fellowship, to be a part of that solution in Jesus' name. I wanna encourage you to give and to give generously to this gospel opportunity that is unprecedented after this year that 2020 has been. Let's respond and respond generously together. Uh, there's information on the screen about how to direct your gift and you'll be able to do so for the next several weeks uh, together. But this is a terrific opportunity to see the gospel go forth. Let's do this together, Fellowship. Thank you. Well, friends and family, we would love if you would join us in giving to this Pandemic of Hope initiative. Yes, and you can do that a variety of ways. One of those ways is you can use the link that you see on your screen and you can give your donation online. Or you can also mail or drop your check off at the church office here at Fellowship. Yeah, well, we're going to transition a bit, Rochelle, because I heard that that Robbie's got something up his sleeve. Oh, that Robbie. You know it's something funny. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Captain's Log, Stardate 4127.2. The Enterprise received a distress signal while exploring an unknown region of the galaxy. When we responded, we found it was a trap. We were attacked by two unknown enemy vessels. Through my brilliant maneuvering, one enemy vessel was destroyed and the other was damaged and had to withdraw. The Enterprise, however, was severely damaged and is now drifting aimlessly through space. It's confirmed, Captain. One enemy vessel has been destroyed. Thank you, Lieutenant Uhura. Sulu. No sign yet, sir, of the other enemy vessel. Keep searching. Yes, sir. Scotty, damage report. It's a mess down here, Captain. The whole engine room is lit up like a pinball machine. How long before we have warp drive, Mr. Scott? You gotta be kidding me. It'll take a week just to assess the damage. You might have impulse power in three days, but I can't promise you a thing. I remind you, Mr. Scott, that an enemy vessel 
has left here under its own power. We don't know when or if it will return. Kirk out. Captain, here's the injury report. We lost several crew members from the attack. Fortunately, none of them were main characters from the show. Thank you, Nurse Chapel. Oh, and tell Dr. McCoy I'd like to see him on the bridge. Yes, sir. Fascinating. What is it, Spock? The Enterprise has somehow systematically charted a course, moving us in a path heading towards Sirius. Sirius? That's the largest star in the galaxy. A modern day star of Bethlehem. Star of Bethlehem? A sign in the sky signaling the anticipated birth of a coming Messiah back in the early days of Jerusalem. It has since become a universal symbol of hope and is also known as the Star of Christmas. If we are charted towards Sirius, why does it seem like we're drifting in the opposite direction? We seem to be caught in some form of gravitational pull. I think I've located the source. We seem to be caught in the gravity of a black hole. What does it mean, Spock? A black hole, Captain, is a star that's gone supernova and collapses upon itself. Though small in size, its density is incredible, and its gravitational pull is so strong that even light cannot escape from it. Thanks, Spock. But you still haven't told me what it all means. What it means, Captain, is that if we do not have warp drive in three minutes to break away from the black hole's gravity and head towards Sirius, we never will. Which also means that we will be sucked into the black hole's center and the 850,000 square meters of the Enterprise will be crushed down to an area smaller in size than the head of a pin. Scotty, we need warp drive now! I'm doing the best I can, Captain. We've taken two direct hits. I've lost half my crew. I Scotty, we don't have three weeks. We don't have three days. We have three minutes. We don't have warp drive in three minutes. Things are going to get cramped in here. I could do with a little less space, Captain. Scotty, warp drive. Three minutes, or we're all dead. Finished. I'm sorry, Captain. There's nothing else I can do except pray. Pray? A primitive means of communication to a supreme deity. I believe it was last used in the late 20th century. What are the odds, Mr. Spock? As they stand, Captain, none. And if we pray? Then I would estimate our chances at being 999,887,332,000 to the 10th power to one. Always go with the odds, Mr. Spock. Bones, we need you to pray. Darn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a chaplain. All right. Scotty, it was your idea. Start praying. Captain's log, supplemental. With only seconds left and the Enterprise facing sure destruction, we've been forced to revert to a late 20th century practice of desperation. Scotty's going to pray. We have 20 seconds, Captain. Aye, Captain. O oh Lordeth, we thanketh thou that thou hear us in our timeth of trouble, and we thanketh thou that thine taken time out of thy busiest schedule to hear it. We have five seconds, Captain. Scotty, get to the point. And one last thing, Lordeth. Help! Scotty, what's going on down there? I can't explain it, Captain. The warp drive just turned on without a power source. The Enterprise is traveling at warp nine away from the black hole towards Sirius. We're no longer in danger, Captain. Scotty, how do you explain this? I, I don't know, sir. The warp drive just turned on and started pulling us towards that big star. It, it, well, call me a leprechaun, Captain, but I'd say it was a miracle. Miracle? A miracle, sir, is the superstitious belief in the supernatural of the human events. I know what a miracle is, Mr. Spock. What the captain meant, Mr. Spock, is what does your logical Vulcan brain tell you about what just happened here? I've not had time to process the situation yet, Doctor, but I'm sure there's a logical explanation. I'm sure there is, and I think some of us have already figured it out. Captain's Log, Stardate 4127.2. In sheer desperation, the crew of the Enterprise may have rediscovered hope, the power of prayer, and the gift of life that comes when heading toward the Star of Christmas.
Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to my home. I'm so happy we can share this very special Christmas Eve together. It's not exactly what we thought 2020 Christmas Eve might be like, but then again, 2020 was a year like no other. Remember back to Christmas Eve 2019 when we were full of expectations and plans for 2020? We thought it would be one thing, but it turned out to be another thing entirely. 2020 was no piece of cake. No wonder the is it cake meme went viral this last year. Maybe you saw it, people making hyper-realistic cakes, and you think it's one thing, but then you're like, wait, is that cake? The is it cake phenomena perfectly captures this virus impacted year. Strangely weird and unsettling. If you felt unsettled by 2020, I've got good news for you tonight. A real sign of hope is in sight. At Christmas 2020, many are looking for a sign, a sign that good change is coming, a sign that things will turn around, a sign of hope for the years to come. Here in the few minutes we have together on the eve of Christmas 2020, I want you to know that God has put a sign of hope in your life this year. And I want to help you see this sign and follow it to its source, which is Jesus the King. The Magi of the Christmas story reveal this truth. Perhaps you have a nativity set with the wise men worshiping at the manger. Mine is right over there. Legend says there were three, but the Bible doesn't say that, though it does tell about the three gifts they bring. We know they came from the East, probably Persia or even China. Magi is close to the root word from which we get magic. So it seems these were learned men who studied the mysterious sky as early astronomers, Eastern mystics probably. In their worldview, major events on Earth were believed to happen in combination with events in the sky. For example, when the Magi saw Halley's Comet in year 29, they would have likely seen it as a sign of something great about to happen on Earth. Some believe the star the Magi saw and followed was the conjunction of planets, where the planets overlap in such a way that they become the brightest star in the sky as seen from Earth. And isn't it ironic that Earth just witnessed the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn last Monday evening. Did you see it? The last year, these two planets were this close and this bright in the sky was the year 1226. Hmm. Interesting. 2020, the year the whole world is looking for hope, a celestial sign appears in a way that it hasn't for 800 years. It's as if the Lord is reminding us at the end of 2020, hope is literally in the air and pointing to Jesus. This is how the Magi felt. Their world, too, was ruled by disease, division, and despair. Scripture says in Matthew chapter 2, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who is born, King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. They saw a star in the sky and they interpreted it as a sign. Why? Because the Magi were looking for a sign of hope. And to be honest, some of us need a sign of hope because we are struggling to be hopeful tonight. Some within the sound of my voice feel a dreadful sense of despair in your life. But I believe the fact that you're listening right now means that you are looking for a sign of hope. And I want you to know that God will be faithful to give you one, even tonight. But just like the Magi, you will have to risk something to follow that sign. Keep in mind, the Magi were not even Jewish. So why would non-Jewish people make such a long, costly, risky journey to worship a newly born king that wasn't even theirs? Matthew includes this detail in his account of Jesus' birth because he wants everyone to know that Jesus was more than a king of the Jews. He was king of the world. 
The Magi themselves were a sign that one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is King. Of course, when the Magi show up in Jerusalem asking about King Jesus, it threatens the reigning king named Herod. And knowing the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, we read that the text says, Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. But we know King Herod was lying. He meant to assassinate Jesus, not worship him. And look what happens next. After they heard the king, they went on their way. And the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Scripture says the Magi found the hope to which the star pointed. And it wasn't a philosophy or a product. It was a person, King Jesus. And we're told the Magi bowed down and worshipped the child king with expensive treasures and gifts. You see, when you find true hope for change, you don't hold back. There is no sacrifice too big for the Magi because Jesus is worth their worship. So here's the thing. We all worship something. In fact, whatever you put your hope in is what you actually worship. And for a long time in my life, I put my hope in being approved by others. I was hardworking and hyper-diligent because my hope was in pleasing people because it was what I hoped to most deliver for me. Subconsciously, I worship the approval of others. And that's the thing about worship. Everyone does it. Everyone worships, religious or secular, whether one even knows it or not. The question is only, is what you're worshiping worth it? Does it deliver what you hope? As a pastor, I can tell you that worshiping the approval of others doesn't deliver, especially in years like 2020. But I get a choice. Worship the king, or the counterfeit. I wonder about you. What hope have you unconsciously worshipped in 2020? Political change, financial security, your appearance, your health, your sex life, your gaming, your sports, your entertainment. Remember, we worship what we most hope will satisfy. And this is a message we need at the end of this tumultuous 2020. This part of the Christmas story prophetically calls out to us this year. So much so, God ordained a Christmas star of our own, shining brighter than it has for 800 years. As we celebrate the birth of Christ tonight, we remember that God puts the signs of hope all around us that lead us to Jesus. Sometimes he hangs them in the nighttime sky. Other times he puts them in our family, our workplace, or our friendships. But these signs are clearly visible if, like the Magi, we are looking for them. And they always lead us to Jesus. On this Christmas Eve 2020, I think it's really important to see the signs of hope God has placed in our lives this year that lead us to or back to Jesus. To do so, it helps to look through the lens of gratitude. And my guess is 2020 has brought some challenges for you, but in the midst of them is a sign of hope God has given you leading to Jesus. So let's get practical here. I want you to remember this question I'm about to ask and discuss it now in the chat or later uh, with your household after this live stream ends. Ready? Here's the question. What sign of hope has God put in your life this year? Let me give you an example. One sign of hope Jesus put in my life this year was godly friends. I called on about a dozen of them last August for counsel and comfort in a really challenging situation. And they loved me, they prayed for me, and they shared my burdens. Like a bright star shining in the darkness, these friends were a sign of hope God put in my life this year. What about you? What sign of hope has God put in your life this year?
Maybe it was a positive change in a physical or mental illness, but perhaps it wasn't circumstantial at all, but simply the profound care or kindness of someone. Somewhere in a difficult period this past year, God gave you a sign of hope to follow, big or small. Go ahead and post that sign in the chat right now and share it with your household later this evening. But what if you can't see any signs of hope this past year? I'm aware that some of you may say to me, Joe, you don't know the trouble I've seen this year. My skies are dark and starless right now. Good for you if you have godly friends, but I am alone in my struggle. Look, if you feel something similar, here's hope. The very fact that you tuned into this live stream is like a little star you saw and followed. Jesus is drawing you to him, and he has placed this moment in your life as a sign of hope. Scripture says that God has marked out the time, place, and boundaries of our lives so that we would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. The miracle of Christmas is that God is not far from any of us now. In Jesus, God entered the dark side of humanity to shine light on living beyond sin and dying for us so we could. Jesus' death and resurrection makes hope for this life and the next one possible if, like the Magi, we seek and reach out to find him. But as I said earlier, the Magi had to risk something to follow the star. And so will you. If you feel alone tonight and far from a sign of hope from God, will you take the risk to reach out for him by responding to the request prayer link in your chat right now? Doing so will allow for a real-time conversation to happen between you and godly men or women who love you. I'm confident this conversation itself can be a sign of hope God puts in your life this year. Please, don't struggle alone any longer. Hit the request prayer link now to find hope tonight for 2021 and beyond. Friends, there is bright hope for 2021. In fact, there is bright hope for year 10,021 because our hope is in King Jesus who is and was and is to come. And I can guarantee you that tomorrow we are one Christmas closer to his second coming. Easy or hard, live or die, our eternal future with Christ is shining forth from that life into this one. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. So it's time to grab a candle, a match, a lighter, a phone light, whatever you've got, as we testify together again this Christmas Eve 2020 that the light of Jesus has come into the world and the world will not overcome it. Jesus, may we be the light in this world you called us to be as we eagerly await your second coming.
Steph and I thank God for you, and we're glad we could share this very special Christmas Eve together. Thank you for giving generously to the Pandemic of Hope offering and for discussing the hope question with your families tonight. And now, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in him so that we may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Well, Fellowship family, that's it. Wasn't it such a special and sweet Christmas Eve celebration together? Yes, it was. We love you, Fellowship family. Thank you for joining us. Our prayer for you is that the rest of this Christmas Eve night and tomorrow Christmas Day can be a point of remembering the hope that Jesus brought into the world when he was born. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.